the the Kobe's retirement year, that oh, last yeah. year, the 15, 16 year, um, they always attribute it as like it's just different because you know, Kobe was retiring, things were just a little bit different. Um, and shouts out to Lou Will. I actually listened to him on uh Whoa. Paul George's podcast. He he actually shouted you out. But he he talked about that year and the practice, the the practice. I think we all know what practice we're talking about, but talk talk about just not only that year. But the practice specifically, I want to know from your perspective, the y'all soft as Charmin. Man, look, I was that was I think a year or two before I got to with Jeremy Lin was there, but like the same type of atmosphere was there when he would come. Like, like, bro, like um, I'd say this, like I said, Kobe didn't practice with us most of the time. So we had this coach, uh B. Scott, Byron Scott, you know, he was with the Showtime Lakers. He used to run us to death, bro, on game days. At I thought y'all didn't run as it. I thought they didn't run in the NBA. Bro, he had us doing three man weave up and back. That's two. Everybody to goes Riley twice. So bad. Three man weave <laughs> up and up and back to six to eight to ten. This is on game days, bro. We used to be so tired. Kobe had fresh legs because he would just show up to the games, you know. So he wouldn't practice with us, you know. So That's crazy. and um, big Kobe. Yeah, big bro. I don't my hell, bro. Like it is cold. Be like no, bro. He had his he he had his own locker room. He had the L.A. Kings locker room. So like we would have our locker room, and then like he would have like it'll be a tunnel. You remember that thing about the uh, the Clippers and whoever the the Lakers or whoever who was the it fight was the like, hallway? Yeah, they went to yep. go fight. Yeah, yeah, the Rockets. Uh, so that's the hallway. Kobe would walk through to, to to his locker room and everything like that. You know, so he would use the L.A. Kings locker room. So, uh, but but it, I mean, it, it was it was definitely tough. Um, there was cameras there everywhere. Like in Indiana, uh, Larry Bird, we had a chance to do like a hard knocks type of thing for us. Uh, but Larry Bird was like, "No, nah, like he's like we just want the guy to focus." So I had never seen like like Kobe had a documentary crew with them there the whole time. So um, I to bring it up, but like you know, there was some stuff that I mean, God rest his soul. But he caught some stuff. Um, in the locker room, like when there was a, the, it's documented. I love the dude, um, D'Angelo, but like he caught like that. He that camera crew had some stuff that ha- like that caught some interactions, um, you know, with the the D'Angelo Russell and uh, Nick Young situation and everything. Mm. Like that. So that was like a weird year too, you know. That that thing that thing made things even worse, um, in that locker room. But uh, it was definitely a tough year, bro. I forgot about that. But yeah, it was definitely a tough year. It was, you know. But uh, but yeah. But it was uh, it was good to get to know Kobe, though. He was a good dude. Hmm. Uh, well, well, we said necessarily we're not going to talk about your career for too long here. So I yeah. guess I'll be the one to break the ice. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of times where people like us or people like me, at least. There's a reason you didn't see my basketball highlights. I suck at the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. we'll have these passionate takes on basketball. And then yeah. a lot of times a player, especially one of the caliber of yourself, will say, you have not played the game. How do you feel about people who haven't played basketball, damn near unathletic, speaking on the game of basketball, and sometimes being spot on while other times being way left? In short, how do you feel about people who have not played speaking on the game? So, bro, I don't mind people in the comments. Like, that's life. You know, you have your opinion. Like, do I care about, you know, uh, reporters who don't play the game? No. Like, some of the best coaches in the NBA never played the game in the NBA, you know? So, like, I have no problem with that. The only problem I have with, like, fans speaking on it is when they talk about bet. Oh, you fucked up my parlay and shit like that. You know, I don't care about that shit. You know, like, I don't give a fuck. You can tell me, like, my jump hooks are, like, trash. I'm like, you know what? They are trash. I got to work on them, you know? That's just how mm-hmm. I looked at it, though. But for me, like, I didn't care about the bet stuff, though. But, um, but yeah, like, I mean, I, I don't mind, man. Like, you pay your money, you, you can, you can have, you can have your opinions. I mean, like, the other tough stuff is like when I, like, a little piece of my soul dies when people say, "I hope you tear your ACL or some shit like that." Yeah, that's yeah, that's, 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 that's always you know, that's tough to hear, you know. But at the same time. I don't mind, like you know, B. Souls gave me constructive. Crit- That's why I'm here right now. He gave me constructive criticism about my YouTube channel. I gotta ask y'all some questions too, cause I got I gotta pick y'all's brain as well and everything like that. But for me, like I, I think, like my pops was just like, you know, you know, you gotta be able to, you can't be soft, you know, like you gotta be able to take, you know, what people are saying, hear how they're saying it, and then like, you know, and then you know, be real with yourself 
and, and you know, so so I don't think you know. So I, I'm getting on a tangent right there. But now you you're good, bro. It's a it's a messy situation. I guess my follow would be since you're pretty um neutral on it. If there is one thing that happens that you would say, hey, bro, you really do have to play to understand. Otherwise, yeah. you just don't know or you feel it isn't talked about. What would that be? I think they, they eliminated this, but I used to have the worst games on like four games in five nights. That's that is tough, mm. though, bro. We can play Monday night. We can play, let's just say, 7 a.m. Uh, let's say, sorry, 7, 7, say a 730 game. The game gets done, let's say, about like. 9 30 9 45 to say whatever like that right and then let's say before the game uh you know i, I would try not to uh do this but like the first game uh, if we get done at 9 30 9 45 coach says all right planes at 11 or 11 15 so we have time to see family get some food get on the plane we fly we fly let's say we fly to philly we get to philly at like let's say we're not let's say say we get to philly at one o'clock, two o'clock, right? So we get to the to the hotel. I'm still a little wired up. So like I get, you know, I don't go to bed till like you maybe three or something like that. And then we have like on back to backs, you don't have shoot around. We have a uh, film, we have film at like in breakfast at one. And I sleep all day. We get on the we get on the bus, we go to the game, we play that game in Philly. From Philly, uh same thing. We get done at 9 45, 10 o'clock or whatever like that. Planes at whatever we fly to the next city. You have a day off, but then those next two games, bro, like my numbers just go down, bro. Cause like the travel, like we go from coast to coast. You go from yeah. Miami yeah. to like Cleveland, Cleveland to like that travel right there. So I used to have uppers and downers, bro. I used to 7 30 game, 7 15. I'm taking like like muscle farm pre-workout, like caffeine stuff. And I'm caffeine sensitive. Now I can't I, I can't go to bed till like four mm. or five. <laughs> So what am I going to do? I, I, so I, I talked to the I talked to the league. I, the league, I said I have this problem with the league. They give me uh, uh, uh they check me out. They said, all right, you can get a prescription for Ambien. So I said, all right, Ambien. I take the half a pill, and then because I don't want it like you know, so I take half a pill. It works. I still feel groggy the next day, but then like that half a pill eventually turns into like a pill, pill and a half, just so I can get some sleep because like I'm going you know on the plane. Sometimes the plane needs to defrost for like an hour and a half. Uh, mm -hmm. we, you know, it's been sitting on the on the tarmac uh, uh, because we had a double overtime game in Cleveland. So now we don't take off till like two a.m. and we have a game the next day, bro. And that shit used to like, kill me, man. It used to kill me. So it was the fatigue factor that you feel like a lot of fans just don't see. Like when they, let's say when Embiid has man. a bad game, yo, you don't know that he just traveled like for ten hours and yeah. needed to play at an extremely high level. On prime but time then again, you have the people say, "Are oh, you making millions of dollars? You got to figure it out." So I'm just like, "Man, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying to see if I can get like an IV at every city I fly at. Make I have a nurse come give me an IV yeah. at two, three in the morning. I got to pay extra for that and everything like that. I'm trying to figure out like uh, I'm having like these Normatec boots on my legs to like uh, pump uh, blood through my legs so uh, I can get some fresh legs. I tried everything, man, but that type of stuff, you know." You can't really talk about because back then it'd be like, yo, you soft, like you making millions of dollars, but that shit was that shit was tough though, man. No, I it wasn't all my fault. No, I was gonna say I'd like that because when we had that conversation about expanding the league, that was literally all the criticism in the comments or even on, on here. I think Damo was saying it to me. Well, I know you're saying it in a joking way, but like, oh, but they're they're flying, they'll be flying to Vancouver in like first class, like uh private jet type thing. It's 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 not the same. I know jet you was playing Damo. Bro. Toronto is a great city, but every time we go through Toronto, we have to go through customs, and that's it's long, right? Long, bro, it, it, like, they, they, like they sometimes they fast track us, and if you have any of your teammates have a record, like they'll come through the line and they'll get pulled, and you won't see them till the next day <laughs> because, like in Toronto, like in Canada, they don't play about like you know having a like record and stuff like that. I've had teammates I haven't seen till shoot around the next day because they had to spend like a little while at the the station and everything like that. So that adds even extra more time, like. Do you want to live in Toronto? Uh, you know, like you know, great city. You know, gets cold, really cold, and everything like that. But you got to go through customs like every night. Like that is every time you come back from an away game, you got to go through customs. I ain't trying to overwhelm you with the questions, but you keep set. You keep setting up the lobs, man. Yeah, so yeah, I guess yeah. the, the final one would be. So you talked about scheduling being the most underrated factor. Cool. How do you feel about a shortened NBA season? No, nah, I need that money. I need that money. <laughs> I need that. Okay. I say get rid of, cut, down, cut down on more preseason games 
and then like you know maybe like space them out a little bit more. Maybe you know maybe what maybe we start the season a little bit later. You know what I'm saying? Let football have their thing for a little bit. You know, maybe start the season a little bit later, going to the going to the to, to, to the summer a little bit more. You know. Now that we agree, yeah. For you, I think I you guys competing with football is. Do, do you feel like tough. contracts would be lower if there was a shortened season, or is it on oh, some yeah. out on what the, the money? Yeah, it, it, it's based off the TV rights. I I, I believe so. So if there's like mm. less games, because you get paid per game, you know. So yeah, yeah, that's games like less checks though, man. I need that money. <laughs> so you would you would be anti because these are the things they just been throwing around with the whole we're adding new teams. They yeah. threw around Vancouver and Mexico City. You like that's a crazy concept coming from like an NBA player ex- perspective to fly to Mexico City from like I don't know New York like, or something. from New York yeah that'd be tough I mean for you know that'd be tough man like Vancouver's nice like I, I, but man that's that's a long flight though man I, I I mean I'll be for it though man I'll be for it I'd be for it but uh we'll make it figure out where guys don't have to get so tired you know flying around so. They probably sit out more games now. Mm. That now that's sense. a fact because when we when we looked where Mexico City was, I didn't realize it was that deep in Mexico. Yeah. I thought it was a little closer. That that month that was South Mexico. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't. We all thought it was like deep. right under Nevada type shit. We all thought it was <laughs> in Mexico for real. That was crazy. <laughs> all right, 